Hi, everyone. Scott here again from the Aware Athlete Show. And today I'm going to be conducting an interview as we've done many times before, but this time I'm going to be interviewing myself about my new book, The Serious Destiny. So obviously I wrote the questions, but let's go here with the, uh, get started with the interview. So why did you write Mysterious Destiny? Well, actually, Mysterious Destiny just, I never viewed myself as an author and I didn't picture myself writing a novel, a fiction book, but this book just kind of poured out of me. And I have an appreciation for science fiction, I have to admit to being a Star Trek fan. And so this book just kind of poured out of me after I had a life-defining experience, a, a fork in the road. And after I had, uh, had learned some things, actually this book, you wouldn't know it by reading it, but what prompted it was an experience within me that prepared me to go back to school. And uh, unfortunately, I had for a long time been a little bit stubborn, thought I could do anything, learn anything on my own. And when I finally opened up to the possibility of uh, going back to school, learning from other people, uh, accepting that I might uh, change my place in society a little bit. Uh, this that made, made a big difference in my life because we have so much personal power that we don't access and are not aware of. The power to change ourselves and the power to even change the direction that we go in life and the power to even change circumstances that are not right for us. So this kind of poured out of me. So why destiny and why mysterious? Well, I think as life unfolds, it is, it will reveal itself to us in ways that we couldn't have predicted. And what everyone is interested, I think, in what is life? How does it play out? You know, how is it, how is it going to end up? What does it mean for me? So what are life-defining moments? Well, I think that we really all have quite a number of them. Some of them start out in childhood. Many of them do. Because in childhood, that's where we set our course in life. And uh, we find out we're good at this or not good at that, or I, that, or I could never do this, or I like that, or I get in trouble if I do this, or uh, I'm driven to do that, or I've learned this and it's good enough. And by the time we get out of childhood into early adulthood, we've kind of built a self-image. So there are a lot of defining moments in childhood. But as you grow into adulthood and later, uh, and experience life more. There are a lot of things that kind of hit you in the face or cause you to change direction. And I call those life-defining moments. So why did, why did you choose fiction and sci-fi to be the vehicle to tell your story? Well, you know, I could, uh, I could tell you a story, but there, there are a lot of ways to get a message across and storytelling is one of the oldest and uh, you know some people sometimes people get a message across through a painting through music uh, through a parable through poetry lots of ways uh, to get to get a, a point across and stories are one of the most ancient why? Because they offer us something that takes us into an experience, into a journey. 
kind of go on a little journey with the person who's telling the story. They become then memorable because we haven't just been told a fact, but we've actually kind of had an experience through the story. They become something that we can carry with us. Oh, I remember that story. So there's a lot of story and uh, power in storytelling. And uh, I was just moved to do it that way. Although I may be doing it a lot of other ways too. There are a lot of stories that we have to tell in life. So why is the conflict you see around you really the conflict within? Because of course, when you write a story, there has to be conflict or it becomes rather uninteresting. So why is the conflict you see around you really the conflict within? Well, look at the world we live in. There's conflict everywhere. But that's really only a reflection of the conflict within us. Every one of us has lived with, is living with some kind of conflict within. We might aspire to live a very integrated life, but it's the conflict within us that carries over into the conflict in the world so that if a person cannot uh, come to terms with the conflict within, it becomes nearly impossible for society not to reflect conflict. So it starts with us. How is not, and by the way, conflict, uh, this story just poured out of me. I just wrote and wrote and wrote and it was done. However, another defining moment is the fact that when you get done, you've told a story from the heart, but perhaps you told it poorly. You knew nothing about the actual craft of storytelling. So that was, that was a process, uh, another learning process. You have to learn about story beats and plot points and all of those things so that you carry the reader through to a noteworthy point or conclusion so that your story actually matters to those who are hearing it. So again, a life defining moment leads to the story and then the story leads to more learning. So how is not knowing, not knowing? You see, there were things I didn't know. The beginning of learning and expansion. There's no expansion or no growth without realizing what we don't know. And that's what this is all about. I didn't know something. Well, now I kind of know it. And now a story flows out. I didn't know how to write a story. And that's the beginning of <laughs> not knowing and knowing that you don't know is the beginning of learning. So what's the difference between surviving and thriving as both are mentioned in the book? Because they both involve coming through a trial. Well, many of us survive many things, but we may survive that, uh, some of them without really thriving. We hate what we've been through. We're bitter about it. So uh, the difference between going through something and, and thriving and going through something and merely surviving is, is very large. Uh, thriving actually proves, proves resilience and it proves the nature and the character that you've been able to bring to an experience. So uh, if there's an art of living, it's probably the art of learning the difference between surviving and thriving. It's really profound. So what's the importance of neutrality, centering, and grounding? 
Well, centering and grounding are pictured uh, through an experience in the book that the protagonist has. Uh, both of them are an example of what we might call neutrality. And we talked about conflict, but neutrality is something so missing from this world. Again, a person could argue a point vehemently and another person could argue the opposite point vehemently. But what if you could argue both points equally? What if you could stand in the middle and choose, excuse me, the action that's appropriate for your, your circumstance instead of being so rigidly in habits that you really have no choice but to act compulsively. So cultivating neutrality is really cultivating the, the dissolution of me or ego, I speak of ego this time in the term of selfishness, so that you can stand in the middle and act fairly or appropriately in each circumstance. And that will help you make right decisions. So that, that really is the way we get free to act appropriately is because we be, begin to get a little bit freer and we have choice. We don't have to go strictly out of habit, but we could actually stand in a place of inhibition or neutrality, listen and take things in and act appropriately. That's all pictured through an experience that the character has in the book. So why do we need mentors? Well, why do we need, why are human beings social animals? And uh, none of us have gotten through life and learned skills completely by ourselves. Certainly it's good to be self-sufficient, but we feature a mentor in the story strongly because it's simply something that we can benefit from having friends, benefit, benefiting from another point of view sometimes. Um, if we can be quiet enough to accept it, there are a lot of points of views out there. So very prominently, this book is about wisdom and power. It's about external power and it's about personal power. And we have more power, I've discovered, to change ourselves and to change our circumstances even when they're not appropriate for us than we realize. So one of the inspirations for the book is, well, one of them is Moshe Feldenkrais's famous saying, if you know what you're doing, you can do what you want. And another one is Proverbs 21, 22, which says, one who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. So what does that mean? One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. All right, so we have the word mighty here and the city and the stronghold a position of strength, position of power, and speaking of a person who actually is in this outward position of power. And then contrasting that with, with the person who has gained some wisdom. Wisdom. So it's a proverb, it's a teaching, it's, it's, a, it's about what can happen if this and if that. So how could wisdom, 
and help you go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. And we find that we could apply this whole thing to ourselves. Have we had, have we considered ourselves to be mighty and had a stronghold in which we trust? Or we could apply that to the outside world also. But first we should, if we want to understand it, I think apply it to ourselves. Have we ever been mighty in our own judgment? Built up a stronghold in which we trust? I think we've all done that. We all know how to defend our ego and how painful it is when it's attacked. But the wise has, has a kind of power that's actually effective, that doesn't have to be defended by external means, that actually can stand neutral without fear and look at the truth. So we can actually function in this world through wisdom and personal power rather than the outward power that we imagine ourselves to have. And that's what this story was about. I imagined myself to be a mighty and then I realized that maybe I should open myself up to real wisdom and to others' wisdom and to eternal wisdom. I imagined myself to be mighty and then I realized that personal power, real power, lasting power, deep power comes from actually not defending yourself, from opening yourself up to true wisdom, which is more the place where we say, I don't know what I don't know. And then things begin to open up for us in a way in which we perhaps never expected. So I'm kind of excited about my book if you haven't noticed it's, I like being able to just tell the story this way. It's a little bit more interesting. Plus I wanted to bring a sense of adventure to it. So the next question is how can we read Mysterious Destiny, Mission to Moros? And it's available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. Be sure you put in the entire title, Mysterious Destiny, Mission to Moros or Mysterious Destiny by Scott Forrester. And you can also watch a brief trailer. If you go onto YouTube, you look at the Aware Athlete Show and the Mysterious Destiny book trailer. So thank you uh, so much for listening to this and uh, I hope you enjoy the book. As I, as I say, I'm kind of excited about it. So uh, we will see you in the next